in front of me is a Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. Now I will be completely honest, some of them might be a little bit rudimentary but there is also some that you might have never known existed and are basically unique to uh, just Samsung devices. So anyway, we're gonna start off with the simple ones which uh, majority of them are located in the uh, display section right over here. So we have the dark and light mode, which I'll start with. Now this is just a simple toggle, so you can choose if you want light or dark mode. On these devices, uh, going with dark mode might have a little bit more advantages. This is using a AMOLED display, which means that the pixels that are completely black, so basically the spaces in between. Now on the camera it might look like everything is black, but uh, in reality there is like these uh, spaces in between, and there is like this more of a grayish tone for uh, like where you have text. So the pixels that are completely black are uh, turned off. The backlighting for those pixels is off, meaning that you will also preserve a tiny bit of battery on top of it. And going to the dark mode itself and like the options, we also have the dark mode settings right here, which uh, give you a little bit more control. And that is something that I would recommend going into. So turn on as schedule is, in my opinion, a much better option for this. It will keep the dark mode on for instance during the dark or during the night time as it is set by default and during the daytime it will change into light mode giving you best of both worlds because during the daytime and direct sunlight it might be a little bit harder to see your display when it's in dark mode but light mode should work significantly better in those circumstances so anyway that's the first one now moving on to the second option is going to be the display refresh rate which if it's not set uh, by default to 120, I highly recommend changing it to, to that. But it looks like it is actually set by default to 120, so that's good. Anyway, we can navigate to that under the display and it should, should be somewhere here. There we go, motion and smoothness. So it is set to adapt. And what this does is um, keeps the display at 120 hertz whenever it can utilize that so right now actually i believe it would be running at 120 just because we have this uh, two animations right here but if we go back here uh, the phone will drop the refresh rate not to 60 but apparently to one hertz so this will preserve as much battery as it can uh, but also use more battery when it needs to uh, display things at 120 which would be for instance right now so when you're starting to scroll, it will automatically switch to uh, 120 to give you that nice battery smooth motion. Now, if you want, you can drop it to be a static 60 as an example by going with the standard. This will ensure that you're basically using a moderate amount of battery and uh, also won't be doing any of that like switching between 1 hertz to 120 hertz depending on what you're doing. It might provide you with a battery better better battery life that's what i meant to say uh, but obviously you won't uh, you won't have that nice uh, motion smoothness that you have with adapt anyway let's move on to the next one which is the screen mode and by default it's set to vivid now this is something that i personally like changing on samsung's samsung is notorious for just overdoing their uh, just colors and in certain circumstances this looks just ridiculous like this uh, shot right here the colors here are so overdone that I might feel like I will get some radiation poisoning by just looking at this image. So what I prefer to do is set it to natural. It tones down the colors of the image, making them a little bit less saturated, uh, which also turns out to be a little bit more realistic. Uh, but in certain cases, it might look a little bit more dull. As an example here with this image, Aurora Borealis, obviously it will look much more appealing in a vivid mode rather than natural. But overall, I feel like natural just gives a bit more balanced look to everything else. So it, to me, it's a change that is worth uh, taking. And last thing in the display section that I will, or actually two last things that I'll show in here, uh, it's going to be the edge panel. So that is this thing right over here. You can customize how this functions when you pull it out. By default, it just shows you a couple apps. So let's go into our edge panel. It should be somewhere right here. There we go. We can tap on this and it will actually give us a couple options right here. So first thing is if you don't use it, you can turn it off. It's just gonna remove this weird like 
semi-transparent bar right there which can pull out at any moment so if you're not using it there's no reason for it to have it to be honest but if you utilize it you can customize it and additionally whoops I just go back uh, additionally you can add what kind of widgets we have right here so as you can see we have a couple of them that are pre-installed so we have things like apps which is selected by default it used to be that there was multiple of them uh, enabled by default but nowadays we only have one and you can add additional ones as an example i just added one and it should be accessible right away i believe yep there we go so it's already accessible and some of the ones that are right here aren't necessarily as useful as you might think uh, but you will find probably much more useful ones in the Galaxy Store, though for the most part they are paid because paying for your premium phone uh, is not enough. Also, you need to buy uh, panels, which is a feature of this device. It's baffling to me, but hey, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, so, truth be told, there are some of the uh, them that are quite quite useful I think uh, the one of the ones that I really like is a calculator because you can quickly access it by sliding away and having your calculator visible right here and I think actually it is a free free panel so if that is something that you want to use you are free to do so like I said some of the more useful ones might be paid so keep that in mind it's not much because they cost about like a buck or two bucks uh, but still the fact that you need to pay a dollar or two dollars for a uh, uh, to extend a feature that already comes with the device is absolutely effing absurd. Still, you might find some use for it. So, now that we got that out of the way, the last thing that I wanted to show, uh, at least in the display section, is the navigation bar. So right here, we can change from having these outdated buttons at the bottom to just fully immersing ourselves in this almost bezel-less phone by selecting swipe gestures which moves, uh, gives us a little bit more room at the bottom, uh, removes the buttons and gives us this tiny little bar, which if you never used before, you basically swipe up on it to go home, swipe up and hold to go to recent and then swipe from either side to go back. As you can see, it shows up, shows up this arrow and when you let go, it goes back. And additionally, uh, because we have more room now, uh, it shifts the apps a little bit further down to accommodate for that extra uh, space that we just freed up. Okay, so now let's move on to home screen settings. Uh, so again, let's not get to the settings and we can now go to home screen. And I'm just gonna quickly glance over these right here. So um, we have a bunch of things that I can change right here. Things like uh, folder grid, app, uh, upgrades, home screen, and so on, which obviously this is all up to preference. And you can choose however you like your apps to be displayed, the grid, as you can see, and have it really crammed will fit much more apps on a single home screen or on a single screen. They might be a little bit more crammed, but still, you have more apps. And obviously you can remove things like other badges, uh, hide names, and so on. So choose whatever you want in here, customize it. I'm not really going to go into it because obviously everybody will find uh, different different settings here useful. Some, some people might not find anything useful here because they don't really care, but yeah. For everybody who cares, you can mess around with these settings right here. <clears throat> now, moving on to the next thing that I want to show is the pop-up windows. Now, what a pop-up window is, is basically <clears throat> a window that you can move around on on top of any kind of anything else opened. So, let's just give a give you a demonstration. So, right now I have album open. I can go into recent, and I can tap on the icon of the settings and open it up in a pop-up view. And for some stupid reason, it just closed off the, the gallery. So let's reopen that. So as you can see, I have now opened my gallery in the background, and I have also settings still open at the forefront. I can interact with it. I can quickly sit, split screen it. Oops, let me just get back to it. I can minimize it. I can maximize it, which will take the full screen. And I'm actually not sure what this does. So it just gives me limited options, great. So let's actually split screen because that's also a nice feature as you can see. And something that apparently Samsung did right here is allowed us to quickly 
swap the apps uh, on the go, which that is actually a really nice addition. It's not groundbreaking or anything like that, but it's a neat thing if you want to quickly swap your apps around. We can also apparently just save them to be no way. So we can apparently save them to be to be saved in this kind of mode. Oh my god, thank you Samsung. I've been waiting for this for a very long time. Until now, I think the only uh, phone manufacturer that done this was Sony with their Xperia lineup, which were kind of overpriced. Here we can do the same thing. Amazing. This actually, I had no idea. While uh, adding this uh, option, I had no idea that I actually improved on it. So I do recommend utilizing that. So as you've seen, all you need to do is just tap right here, tap this uh, button to the right, and it will save your current setup to the edge panel. So now you can see there's our edge panel, and even when I close these two applications, you can quickly get them back by just pressing, and it will automatically open both of them in this kind of split screen manner that I have chosen. Fantastic feature here, holy. So anyway, uh, that was actually a really good one. Now moving on to the next thing, it's going to be just a change of the side key. As you probably remember, uh, Samsung decided to change the functionality of the power key and also remove the uh, remove the name power key because it would kind of conflict with their change. And now they're calling it a side key because it's not like we have two other side keys right here, but they decided to keep them uh, what it was. So now when you hold your <coughs> side key it opens up the most useless feature which is Bixby if you use this feature um, I think I feel sorry for you I don't think there's many of you people out there uh, because everybody who uses uh, assistance probably prefers to use Google which works just better than Bixby but uh, anyway if uh, you like to use Bixby all power to you uh, this probably won't be for you just because I will show you how to remove this so this is for everybody else who doesn't like Bixby so let's navigate into the settings and then we're going to go into advanced features because apparently power key is an advanced feature right up here and it's called obviously a side key because got to keep it inconsistent and from here we have the single press and hold so i believe before we could have had a option to what will happen when you press and hold so you could choose to open an up and up like you do with the double press uh, but that was way too much control uh, over something that they want to force down your throat, which is either a power option or big speed. So anyway, I just stick with the power options because it is much more useful and I am super used to having my power button functioning like a power button and not like a smart assistant. So now when we hold the button, it actually gives us the option that we expect from a power button. Fantastic. Sadly, we needed to go through extra hoops to get it back, but we can at least get it back. And moving on to the next option, uh, this one will be a separate app sound. Now this is something that I, I think is unique to Samsung. And what it allows you to do is basically assign what app will play through what kind of uh, audio source. So as an example, you can select that Spotify will only play through your Bluetooth headphones. If you don't have them plugged in, it doesn't matter. The phone will still prioritize that and even if they're not connected, it's still gonna try to play it or just you won't just hear it until you use those headphones. So anyway, to get that set up, you want to navigate to sounds and vibrations. Then we're gonna scroll down to separate up sounds and you can simply turn it on from here. I'm gonna select select. So here you select what kind of application uh, you want to utilize uh, this feature with. So I'm gonna choose as an example, YouTube. Then we're gonna go back. And this will ask us what we want to utilize this app with. So I can select that YouTube will only be playing through the phone speakers or through some Bluetooth device. So I'm going to select Bluetooth device, even though I don't have any connected. It will now only play YouTube music or YouTube, uh, any kind of YouTube sound through a Bluetooth device. And that's basically all we need to do. Now you can sw switch that around. You can have it to be differently, but now as it is set up, if I try to play sounds through YouTube, uh, I will literally not hear anything because I don't have anything plugged in, any kind of Bluetooth headphones. 
so it will try to play through some Bluetooth device that doesn't exist. So I won't hear anything. So that's uh, something that I recommend utilizing maybe in a little bit more uh, logical manner than I just showcased because right now I just removed uh, the ability to hear anything from YouTube unless I connect some headphones. Uh, but you can probably see how this might be useful in certain, uh, certain scenarios. And now moving on to the next option and also the last one, this is going to be the uh, adaptive sound. Now this is probably one of the more useful features that I, I always adore on Samsungs and it's as far as I know only also on Samsung devices. So let's go right here into sound quality and effects and you will find the adapt sound. Now we have a couple additional things like Adobe Atmos, Adobe Atmos for gaming and equalizers and so on but we don't really care for those. You can mess around with them if you want to but I'm gonna go into this feature right over here. We want to select allow with this pop-up and right off the bat you will see um, the default being no boost. Then we have uh, under uh, 30, 30, 60 and 60 and over. Now what this will do is create an equalizer based on your age which uh, to be completely honest the ones that are pre-made right here are fairly good at least in my experience. Uh, what they are is basically equalizers that um, that bring up sounds uh, that you might be losing based on your age because as you are aware probably uh, the older you get the, the more sounds you kind of lose the, you become all gradually just more deaf to certain sounds that uh, that your ears been blasted over the years with right so that's why kind of children have way better hearing and a way wider uh, stage of hearing over like an adult so what this will do is equalize that sound based on your age to accommodate for your hearing hearing loss and like I said the ones that are pre-made are fairly good uh, in my experience they worked relatively well for my uh, my experience which would be the, uh, under 30 or 30 to 60 I am right now uh, 31 so when I tested it the, the first time around I was obviously uh, below 30 and it functioned really well but I would still recommend you to create your own by selecting test my hearing this will then go uh, through a list of different sounds they are just like high pitch uh, really quiet uh, whines so just like beeps uh, and, and just whines that that will be played on through your for you and you basically select if you can hear it or if you cannot now for this uh, as you I think it's written right here you want to uh, have a really quiet room and you can only set this up with some kind of headphones so obviously you want to grab your I don't know some kind of cans or maybe whoopsie I just dropped those but you get the point some kind of earbuds and just set it up with those you want to put them in have a quiet environment and then select test my hearing and it will start playing uh, I think it's like 20 sounds and it will start playing them randomly either to your left or right ear and you want to select if you can hear them obviously you don't want to select that you hear everything that would defeat the purpose of this uh, so select truthfully if you can hear it and based on what you have selected it will then create an equalizer specifically for your hearing and trust me it does make a difference you will hear that difference in sound quality and it might sound uh, significantly better, better to you you might be getting some additional benefits from it so I highly recommend going through this now obviously I'm not gonna set it up right here uh, just because uh, the sounds that it will be emitting uh, are so uh, so quiet that even if I put an earbud right next to the the microphone I don't think the microphone can pick it up that that's how that, that's how vague they are uh, but it is a really really good feature which I highly recommend utilizing so anyway with that being said if you found these tweaks tricks helpful in any way don't forget to hit that like button subscribe and thanks for watching.